We're going to revise some basic anatomy of the shoulder as it is seen on an x-ray, as well as the common dislocations that occur. This is an AP view of a shoulder, and we can see here the humeral head articulating with the glenoid fossa of the scapula. Of course, the glenohumeral joint isn't the only joint of the shoulder, and it's important to specify that you're not talking about the acromioclavicular joint, which is formed by the acromion process articulating with the distal clavicle. Important to note here is that the humeral head has a nice asymmetrical shape that makes it look a little bit like a walking stick. When it becomes symmetrical, it's been rotated, and that's actually a pathological sign in the context of a posterior dislocation. There's a nice space between the humeral head and the glenoid fossa. We know it's in the right place. There should be a little bit of space there because that's where the synovial fluid of this synovial joint lies. Looking from the side, we get a lateral so-called Y view. And we can see a Y formed by the body of the scapula forming the stem, and then the coracoid process anteriorly, and the spine of the scapula posteriorly. In a normal shoulder, the head of the humerus should lie over the intersection of these three lines. If it's not overlying the intersection of the three lines of the Y, then it must be dislocated. A common pitfall is mistaking the shaft of the humerus as forming part of the Y. It doesn't. The Y is formed by the scapula alone. This is a dislocated shoulder. We can see the head of the humerus is outside of the glenoid fossa, and it's lying underneath the coracoid process, which, remember, projects anteriorly. Therefore, this is an anterior dislocation, also known in this case as a subcoracoid dislocation. Anterior dislocations comprise 95% of all dislocations. And we can confirm the anterior dislocation by looking at our lateral view. Here we can see, again, the glenoid fossa is empty, the humeral head is anterior to it towards the rib cage. Now here's a dislocated shoulder that's been reduced, so the humeral head is back in the glenoid fossa, but there's a bony lesion here. This little divot in the posterior lateral aspect of the humeral head is known as a hill sax deformity. It's a compression fracture that's sustained as the humeral head pops out of the shoulder joint. Here's another type of bony lesion. It's called a bank heart lesion, and here we've got an avulsion of a bony fragment from the glenoid fossa. Both a hill sax deformity and a bank heart lesion have prognostic implications, so it's really important to look for them after a dislocation's been reduced. Now here we've got a humeral head that appears to be articulating with the glenoid fossa, however there's no space between the two. Apart from that, we can see that there's an abnormal symmetry to the humeral head. It looks a little bit more like a drumstick or a light bulb compared to a walking stick. This is a pathognomonic sign for a posterior dislocation, and that symmetry occurs because the humerus is rotated. Posterior dislocations are fairly rare. They comprise less than 5% of all dislocations. They tend to occur with forced muscle contraction, such as might occur with an electrocution. We confirm our posterior dislocation by looking at our lateral Y view. We can see that the humeral head isn't really overlying that Y intersection, but it's lying posterior to it. Here's another type of dislocation. We can see that the humeral head isn't lying in the glenoid fossa. In fact, we can see the outline of the humeral head is just below the rim of the glenoid. So this is an inferior dislocation, also known as laxatio erecta, meaning upright dislocation. This injury is sustained through forced hyperabduction, for example, someone falling from a height and having their arm forced above their head. As the arm gets pulled out of its socket, it tears several of the supporting rotator cuff muscles, and it's unable to go back in. So these patients often come into the department with their arm up above their head, and it's very painful. They need to be anaesthetized for it to be reduced. Now, as we look at a few examples, Feel free to pause the video to take a closer look and come up with your own answer. So what's abnormal about this shoulder joint? Hopefully you can see that the humeral head is outside of the glenoid fossa. In fact, it's below the coracoid process, so we know it's an anterior, in this case, a subcoracoid dislocation. What's the abnormality of this shoulder x-ray? 
Once again, the humeral head is outside of the glenoid fossa and below the coracoid process. This is an anterior dislocation. Now here's a shoulder that was dislocated and is now reduced. Is there any bony lesion that you can see here? If you look carefully at the glenoid fossa, there is a bony fragment that's come off. So we've got a bank heart lesion. And we can confirm that in this particular case with a CT scan. What's the abnormality in this shoulder x-ray? In this particular case, there's some increased spacing between the humeral head and the glenoid fossa. But the important thing, and I hope you noticed it, is that the humeral head looks far more symmetrical than it should, appearing like a drumstick or a light bulb. This is, of course, the pathognomonic sign of a posterior dislocation, and we can confirm that with our lateral film, showing that the head of the humerus is indeed posterior to the acromion process and away from the chest wall. And finally, what's the abnormality of this shoulder? It's another anterior dislocation.